This is Professor Pelton. This is part one of chapter three, section four. Uh, now we're to combine functions by addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and uh, general composition. All right, so let's try a couple functions here and do the basic four operations. So first we'll add the two functions. So uh, f plus g of x. So this gives me 2x minus 1 plus x squared plus x minus 2. So you can distribute the 1, so I get 2x minus 1 plus x squared plus x minus 2. Combine like terms, so I get x squared plus 3x uh, minus 3. So that is the function of f plus g of x. Although I left the word space there. Not too sure why. I think the... We'll fix that. Ah, there you go. All right, let's try subtraction. So we have f minus g of x. Okay, so distribute, and I get x, 2x minus 1 minus x squared minus x plus 2. Combine like terms, I get negative x squared plus 1x plus 1. So that is the function of f minus g. Okay, all right, so we'll try multiplication. So this is 2x minus 1 times x squared plus x minus 2. So you need to distribute now. So this gives me uh, 2x the third plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 1x squared minus 1x plus 2. Okay, so we'll combine like terms. So I get 2x to the third uh, plus 1x squared minus 5x plus 2. So that's the f product of g. F pro uh, product of f and g. Okay, so we'll try the d uh, quotient. So that's the 2x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. So really the question is, is the denominator factor? Um, well, I think we will actually factor, but it's not going to matter essentially because it's 2x minus 1 over x and then x, and then the factors of 2 are 1 and 2, but one of them needs to be negative, so it'll be minus plus but that's not going to factor the top, so it's really irrelevant. It's not going to cancel anything, so that's good enough. All right, pause the video, try the student problems. All right, so if we do f plus g, so we're going to do f plus g. So that gives me x minus 5 plus x squared minus 1 after I distribute. So if I combine like terms, I get x squared plus x minus 6. So that is the sum of f and g. Okay. So f minus g is f minus g. So if I distribute, I get x minus 5 minus x squared plus 1. If I combine like terms, I get negative x squared plus x plus x, come on, there we go, uh, minus 4. So we have x, f minus g. Okay, so we have multiplication. So we have f times uh, g. So we distribute, I get x to the third, minus 1x, minus 5x squared, plus 5. So if I just combine like terms, I get 5x to the third minus 5x squared minus 1x plus 5. So that is the product of f and g. Okay, so division, we get x minus 5 over x squared minus 1. You can factor it if you want. It's not going to matter because in this case, they're not going to cancel because it's going to just be x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay, so either one is sufficient because it doesn't cancel. Okay, let's go on to the next page. 
Okay, so what about the domain of the possible values for these functions? Okay, so if I make the function first, uh, f plus g of x, okay, that's going to be f plus g, right? And you have to think about what values can I not plug in, okay? Uh, there's no reason to simplify here. So here, this cannot be negative and this cannot be negative, correct? Fair enough, right? Because x plus 3 uh, must be greater than or equal to 0, and x must minus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0, otherwise you have imaginary. So x must be greater than or equal to negative 3, and x must be greater than or equal to uh, positive 2, essentially. Okay, so we have some overlap here. So if you think about a number line, right? So negative 3 and 2. So I have to be this number or greater, and I have to be this number or greater. They both have to be true. The problem is they're only both true over here, okay? So the result is my domain is 2 or greater, because if I plug in anything that's less than 2, only the right one, um, I'm sorry, only the left one will be true. Uh, so for example, if I plug in 1, the left one will be true, the right one will not be, essentially. All right, pause the video, try the student problem. So student problem, f plus g of x equals root x minus 3 plus root x plus 1. I probably should have a subtraction example, but that's fine, because it won't make any difference, essentially, to the domain if I do that. Okay, so x minus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0, and then x plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0 because they're even roots, right? So x must be greater than or equal to 3, and x must be also equal to greater than or equal to negative 1. So if I put that on a number line and I do negative 1 and positive 3, they, bo they both have to be these values, right? And they both have to be true at the same time. So that's only 3 or greater because if I plug in something less than 3, like 0, Okay, the left one will be false and the right one will be true for zero, right? So it has to be three or greater. So my domain is three or greater, okay? And that'll work for both of them essentially. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is function composition, which is where you put one function inside of another. And they use this open dot um, to symbolize that essentially. So you f, this is right, f of g, or g is in psi, which is the second one, essentially. So what you have to main, the x is the domain of g, and g of x is the domain of f, essentially, you have to think, because you're putting one inside of the other. So if it doesn't go in the original, it doesn't go in the, into the next one, essentially. Okay, so it's like a double, double function. Okay, so graphically, you can think of it this way. What is f of g of 1? Well, essentially, if I do g, you innermost first in order of operations, I do g of 1. Okay, well, this is g. So this is x is 1. I get a value of 3. Okay, so that means g of 1 is 3. So I do that first. g of 1 is 3. Okay, now I do f of 3. So f of 3, here's 3 here, which gives us this value. The value is 6. Okay, so that's essentially what you're doing. You're just doing order of operations, multiple functions, one inside the other. That's the end of part one.